So good afternoon, as it is in the UK. Good afternoon, everybody. And I hope it's a good morning or a good afternoon or a good evening, wherever you're joining from. Welcome to this University of Plymouth International College pre-departure webinar for those students joining us in May this year. So in just a few weeks time now. So we hope you'll have the opportunity during this call to get a lot of the information that you need to ask us any questions you may still have. And we also have a couple of our former students joining us this afternoon so that you can get a first hand idea of what it's like to be a Plymouth student from somebody who's been through this path before you or down this path before you. Let me start by introducing my colleagues on the call. So on behalf of the uh, University of Plymouth and University of Plymouth International College, we have Toby Joseph Johnson, who is our student recruitment, uh, student recruitment, student experience coordinator. Apologies, Toby, for getting your title wrong. And we have Margaret Ajidua, who is our student recruitment uh, manager in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, and I can't quite see all. Has Olawale joined us? Or? Yeah, yes, yeah, he has. I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Okay. So, uh, Massimo and Olawale, if you'd like to introduce yourselves, that would be great. Uh, okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, good afternoon. I'm Olawale Olaleko. I'm a former student of um, UPIC. And um, now I work with Huawei Research and Development Center in. Cambridge, United Kingdom. Um, I graduated from UP and went for my master's at University of um, Plymouth, where I did my master's in data science and business analytics. And lucky me, I finished last year, September, and I got my appointment with Huawei in, almost immediately. So that's great, Olawale. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you for joining us. And Massimo. Yeah, hello everyone. And for myself, Massimo Tarasevich, I was part of UPIC about four years ago and just graduated last year with mechanical engineering bachelor's. And I'm now working in Princess Yachts, also in Plymouth. So having a good time and yeah, good to see everybody again. Great. Thank you, Massimo. Thanks for the introduction. Thanks for joining us. And for everyone on the call, we'll make sure you have plenty of time later to ask Massimo and Oluwale any questions, anything at all that you um, would like to ask. Um, but we do have an agenda. We've got some information that we need to share with you, um, as well as uh, the agenda items. We want to give Margaret some time as well to talk about specifically for Nigeria about form A changes and, and making online payments. But these are the kinds of things that we're going to go through this afternoon. Uh, mostly Toby and I will go through all of this uh, rather drier information. Um, but we're going to uh, meet our students, as we said. We're going to talk to you about the services available to you at the Student Hub. So things like welfare and counselling, disability, dyslexia service, student centre and immigration. We'll talk about accommodation options about dates, really important dates, last date for arrival in the UK, um, how to get to Plymouth. We'll talk about student visas, about the medical center and vaccination, still relevant in light of COVID, um, induction week activities, semester dates as well, and also tell you a little bit about the Students' Union, including the sabbatical officers that we have there. So, if you're driving, Toby, the next slide would be great. Do you want to kick off by talking about the, the student and academic services team? Absolutely. So the student and academic services team comprises of myself and my colleague, uh, Dion Orel. Uh, we're both student experience um, staff members. Uh, what that entails is that we're here from any kind of issue, any kind of questions, any kind of queries that you have. Uh, from Monday to Friday, um, 8.30 to 5 p.m., or even on the weekends if you have any emails that you want to send before and after you've left us uh, studying here. Um, no matter is too small and no, no problems too big. You know, we try our best to signpost and make sure that you have the best possible student experience you can have. Um, just to give you a brief information of what's going on at the college at the moment, uh, my colleague Dion is currently preparing for a semester trip on Sunday where we're taking students to a local city close by and visiting the Eden Project, which is only an hour and a half away. So there's loads of activities 
um, loads of sessions available for students who need to catch up, uh, i.e. they want to join an ICT club, they want to join a maths club, English club. We're here for you um, and we like to look at ourselves as your brothers and sisters whilst you study here. Somebody to look up to, somebody to point you in the direct, right direction. Uncle Toby, that's great to hear. <laughs> Something of the sort. <laughs> um, a little bit more about our opening hours. So we're available 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, like I mentioned. Uh, there's a reception phone number that you can all take down. Not to worry, this session is recorded, so you can have access to this later on. Uh, there's also a student support email at the bottom. So if you have any queries about your accommodation, any queries about what your um, study sessions are going to look like, uh, general queries about the city. Um, I myself, um, I think there's quite a out of, three out of the five people on, on this chat on the panel at the moment are Nigerian. Uh, when Olale joined as well, he wanted to know where the local restaurant would be, where he could buy some plantain and local stuff. We're able to even signpost and go 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 that far. But depending on whatever nationality you come from, we can try. There is a place for you here in Plymouth. A little bit more about the uh, university itself. Uh, as a UPIC student, you're eligible to all the same uh, facilities that a normal direct university student is. Uh, access to the welfare system, the counselling, uh, disability and dyslexia service, and also the student centre and immigration. So whilst you're studying here, if you have like a um, placement year and you're looking for a job, you, we have a department that can help you out with writing your CV and prepping you for uh, various placements. I believe Massimo um, experienced a placement himself whilst he was studying here. Uh, in between that and his final year, I think he had a placement up north. And that put him in a very good position for when he returned and finished his degree, which led him to get this uh, fantastic job at Princess Yards. But as we go on through the presentation, at the end of this um, session, we will be having some Q&A so you can go in and have some really deep questions with some of our panelists here. Location, location, location. So uh, the University of Plymouth and uh, UPIC itself were located on the southwest of the UK. We like to call ourselves Britain's Ocean City. And I'm sure you're going to see why we call ourselves Britain's Ocean City very soon, because I'm going to take you on a little flight on my drone, uh, show you where Massimo is actually, where he's working, <laughs> as well as where, where, where I'm working at the moment, uh, Tim and I. And it gives you a good feel of what the city looks like. You know, it's not just any city that you're used to or you've seen in the movies or done with any research on the internet you know i think uh, it really is the uh, gem of the southwest you know uh, once you've been here once you've visited once you've experienced uh plymouth and britain's ocean city i, I don't think you'd want to you know you you'd, it, you'd, it definitely leaves a lasting effect and you can see a quote there by gq magazine a couple of years ago about it being the coolest little city by the sea Um, in regards to the college and the university itself, it's right at the center of Plymouth itself, uh, so very close to the city center, um, right opposite the railway station. Uh, we're located in box number 20 here, uh, the college is, so we're quite on the outskirts of the university, but everywhere is quite um, central in the sense that transportation costs are very limited. Uh, you get good value accommodation as well across the city, which is fantastic. Um, all the different facilities, all the different faculties are available on campus. Uh, we have various extra support from myself, but also an, a separate student services team located in the student hub in the library. Um, and th that's where you have all the welfare teams, the mentoring sessions, the career advice, and also the immigration center with our team from international students advice. So uh, this is the fun bit. Uh, this is where I'm going to just uh, stop sharing my screen a, a minute and take you on what we call our virtual tour. So you can really get a feel of what uh, Plymouth is like and what it has to offer. Um, while I do this, uh, Lali, you can tell me whereabouts you lived when you were here in Plymouth. Uh, well, I live very close to the university. I think it's about um, less than 10 minutes walk from the university. Um, PL want to be precise, Howard Street. 
very Fantastic. yeah very that's lovely a, very that's, nice. that's yeah. about this region so not too yeah. far at all and you didn't need any bus to get into to, not at all uh, not at all not at all what, what time I, what time of the year did you arrive Wally? january january 20th to be precise 2020 yeah great and how far would you say the um the college and the the, the train station was in regards when you arrived <laughs> it's not up to it's not up to three minutes walk right so it's that's the, three minutes very close that's the train station everyone and that's where the college is right now so it was right across here i met wale around here because obviously i knew he was imminently arriving and i think he was a bit surprised because i caught him <laughs> off guard when i said look wale i think i think you've you've gone past the college a little bit <laughs> So we get we got you sorted and we took you across to your accommodation, yeah, yeah. Uh, to the accommodation office, which is just right here, uh, further um, west of the of the college. So on the corner here is our accommodation provider called Clever Student Lets, right. and they basically handle all our accommodation queries at the moment. We don't force students to use them, uh, but we recommend them because. Um, of a number of reasons. They provide um, bedding packs, they provide welcome packs for students who are arriving at, um, you know, outside office hours. And they also um, structure their uh, tenancy with our study period. So essentially, most of you who would be joining us here on this chat um, are arriving during our May intake, which is kind of unusual in a way because most sessions start in September. Okay. Uh, but the advantage with them is that they would have accommodation and possible some studio apartments available for you from this May intake, which is really good. And it, you know, it's a short let essentially because you're going to be studying from May to August before you possibly progress for some of you who might be going on the pre-masters or for some of you who are still with with us on the foundation program up to December this year before you progress to the first year with us as well. Uh, Plymouth Ho, um, it's an interesting name. Uh, it's a very, uh, very popular location for, for, for a number of reasons, especially the fact that it does illustrate why we are called Britain's Ocean City. Uh, as you can see, there's a load of water here, <laughs> not just any water, ocean water. Uh, and yeah, it's there's a swimming pool available now. I can tell you the weather is just as sunny as it is right now in this uh, tour I'm taking you on. Um, whether or not it's, it's as warm as where you are uh, dialing in on this Zoom is a different story. Um, it's a location that is used right across the city, uh, both by the actual um, population of the city as, and as well as the students in, in the city. So the university uses it for graduation ceremonies. Um, Olale and Massimo graduated on top of the hall here uh, a, a couple of years ago, which was fantastic. I'll let Olale, you know, let, Olale, what was it like for graduating? Ah, it was, it was fantastic. It was awesome. The best experience I've ever had in my life. And um, you guys coming in, just keep your fingers crossed. You are in for a very nice experience in Plymouth. I can promise you all that I'm not paying Olale to say this. This is completely his own experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, still gonna, I'm still gonna tell you guys about wonderful my wonderful experience in Plymouth. Um, well, when I get to my turn, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Plymouth, my experience and everything. It's a good place for you to be. And coming here is the right choice for you. I can, I can tell you that. Tell you that for free. Fantastic. So yes, um, on this promenade here, um, we host uh, the graduating ceremonies. Um, MTV itself, uh, the company, the music channel that some of you have watched over the years, have come here and had uh, various concerts on this promenade. Uh, Margaret will be visiting soon in June, hopefully, uh, coming to come and visit with us and show you what a little bit more about our, the experience that you get when you vi visit Britain's Ocean City. Um, not only um, the whole is not only a nice de destination, but the other side is the Barbican uh, with all these boats and lovely restaurants for students who are interested in some part time work. There are loads of restaurants right around the pier here. Uh, you can come here for lunch, come here. Um, you know, for just to, just for a little walk in between your classes, um, the distance between uh, the Ho and the Barbican and the university is only a five to ten minute walk, so everything is quite central. And essentially, you know, transportation costs are little to none at the moment, unless you're maybe doing some food shopping and you need to take some extra bags, you know, and, and you just 
need need the extra space should you need to jump in a taxi but everywhere is within walking distance uh, right now we are hovering right across the university campus itself uh, most of all these buildings are having some refurbishments at the buildings at the moment so by the time some of you come you're going to experience brand new buildings uh, state of the art this marine building uh, was commissioned by, I believe, one of the um, royal family, which is fantastic as well. Uh, we've got the Royal Levinsky building, which is home to some of our architecture students. We've got the science and engineering building. Uh, the university library is 24-7, uh, and it has a completely available 24-7 um, uh, computer access area for some of you who would like to do some work you know, at all times of the day. Student Union has over 300 societies and clubs. Uh, Nigerian Student Society is very popular over there. We've got the Gaming Society, we've got Harry Potter Society, Indian Student Society, Nepalese. It really is a, a diverse city itself, uh, Plymouth. Tim, have I missed anything? Is there anything that you you'd No, I don't think so, Toby. I think uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a really uh, good, but otherwise, I must. Tomorrow, yeah. you might have more to say. Yeah, Toby, if I might chip into that. If, of um, course. One thing about the library and the computing access that Toby talked about, I, you don't even need to be in the school or in the library to access some of the computer facility. Right from your room, you can, you can have access to the computing system there. Because I remember when I was doing my dissertation then, um, sometimes I don't have to, I'm so busy to go to the um, library, but I can remote from my room to the, to the, to the computer in the computing um, department and do my work. So not only that the facilities are there to force seven, but you have access to it even anywhere you have. Fantastic. And um, the other thing, I mean, regards, did you join any clubs and societies whilst you were here, Lali? Yes, yes. The Nigerian, the Nigerian Student Society. I remember one of the party that um, they had, and uh, ah, it was it was beautiful because ever since I left the country, I've never been in the gathering of so much Nigerian, and the food was was awesome. It's, <laughs> it's just remind me of of Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, we had Nigerian foods, and uh, okay. Don't, 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 don't worry. You can never be stranded in Plymouth. I remember the first day I got to Plymouth, I had Nigerian jollof rice with, with uh, uh, plantain, with, so that very first day I had a feel of home, so. Fantastic, thank you, Olale. Um, I'll stop sharing the virtual tour now. What I'll do is um, I will share a link in the chat function of how to access it later on, but I'll just head back to our presentation. If I may say, Toby, I think it's also worth uh, noting that there's really good sporting societies. So if you want to be part of a team, um, everyone's very welcoming and it's a great way to get to know people. I was in the volleyball society for about four or five years and I still got friends from there uh, you know I met my girlfriend there as well so, so <laughs> in a, another plus but we have also the dancing society so that was great fun and you know you get to meet people outside and get to learn more about different cultures because everyone there is really from all over the world fantastic thanks Massimo um, a little bit on the accommodation, like I mentioned. So we are in partnership with Clever Student Let's. Uh, they're an accommodation provider. You can make an application via our website. Uh, the link is on the URL in the presentation right now. Uh, there's ensuite accommodation available, complimentary, bedding packs, moving day help. And the uh, we, I don't like to say cheap accommodation. I like to talk about value. Um, there's good value in the accommodation. As in, as in regards to the returns you get, the utilities, the all-inclusive nature of the um, arrangement, uh, the ability to have access to good Wi-Fi, and also with live within a safe environment. I was just talking a little bit more about what's involved during the quarantine arrangement. I think we're quite outside of the... Um, <clears throat> I mean, COVID hasn't disappeared, but we're still providing, you know, the, the basics in regards to hand sanitizer, gels, wet wipes, and we're taking good care, uh, ensuring that we're all safe at all times. 
Uh, Tim, do you want to go in a little, a little bit about the late dates for arrivals in the UK and issues around the coronavirus? Um, not a whole lot to say, except for, as you were saying, Toby, um, effectively all restrictions have been lifted now in the UK for incoming and outgoing travellers. Um, so all of the complexities we had to go through with proving vaccination status and filling in forms, um, that has all ended. Um, what that means, though, is we're also coming to an end of the time that we can teach online. Um, so the government has said now that that temporary allowance for um, students to be, uh, in effect, distance learners comes to an end. Um, so everybody needs to be in the UK now by the 30th of June. Um, and we expect that will apply. Uh, I don't think that will change now. So... Um, yeah, so beyond that date, everybody who studies with us uh, will need to be here on campus in Plymouth. Um, if you want any more uh, advice or guidance about visas, we can help with that. Or you can see the URL there uh, for the government site for the, the best, sort of the most up-to-date um, visa advice from the government. And UKISA, so that's the UK Council for International Student Affairs, is also a really good source of advice for all things, um, for everything really, for international students, but also for visas as well. So yes, just bear in mind, 30th of June is now the last arrival date. So anyone starting with May needs to get here if they possibly can, um, but you certainly need to be here, uh, if not for the start date, then certainly by 30th of June at the latest. Thanks, Tim. Um, in regards to the airport pickup service, so there are various modes of getting to Plymouth, uh, not just by um, obviously walking, because <laughs> it's a little bit far, I would say, uh, for that. Uh, but obviously, you can get here via <clears throat> road, train, um, so either train, coach, or actually, you know, a, a taxi service. Uh, we have a taxi service provider available here um, for two hundred and forty pounds. They can pick you right outside Heathrow or Gatwick Airport um and straight to plymouth uh, the idea of using this service over any of the other services is the fact that the ability to get lost is really reduced um obviously if you take the coach service it's just as advantageous because the coach actually stops and is the cheapest form of getting to plymouth uh, from uh, either heathrow or gatwick and straight to plymouth coach station um i think obviously we all know that fuel costs across the world are increasing so understandably these prices are may are subject to change all right uh, but i would suggest that you check the website for more information so like I mentioned, you can get here by train, using a combined ticket, you can come by coach, or you can arrange the private collection with the airport pickup service. Toby, I can see there are quite a few questions coming into the Q&A about payments, about Form A in Nigeria, about making payments online with credit cards. Um, so it might be a good time just to pause and yep. hand over to Margaret and let her talk about that for a little while, because so I give the latest information on that from, from the Nigerian perspective. Is that okay, Margaret? Of course. Yes, it is. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Alawale, for your very insightful input. Um, so yes, we've been getting a lot of questions about payments. Unfortunately, um, at the beginning of the month of March, the CBN and most of the banks in Nigeria changed the spending limit on Naira cards from $100 for about 70% of all the banks to $50 painfully, it has left many students stranded. So um, the only other option is to use the Form A, or I will get to the part of the Form A, or to um, create a dollar account that would allow you to make your tuition deposit payments using your credit debit cards. So the Form A option is still available, but because they are switching from the paper option to the online option, there's such a backlog of um, payments left to be made, and that's causing the payments to take as long as six weeks. So students are experiencing issues with that. So the only other option now is to use the dollar card option, which I've mentioned before. Many banks now offer a dollar account, a domiciliary account. So what you can do is to convert all of that money into um, all of your cash into pounds or dollars, move them to your dollar account and make payments using either a dollar account 
or a pounds account, depending on the one that works for you. The second other option is for you to discuss with your bank, allow them to use a PTA or a PTA option for you so that you can make the payment easily using your card because they've made an allowance of that. So you will also need to, that will require you to go to the bank to make inquiries about that because that's the only other option. The third one is for you to be able to use someone, maybe a friend, family member, or anybody who's residing in the UK, in the US, and allow them, tell them to help you make payments on your behalf. And as time goes on, depending on how feasible it is to work out with the form A between now and when you resume, you can make payments to the person either in bulk or installment, depending on how you want to arrange those payments. But for now, those are the challenges many students are facing. I'm available to attend to any other questions, so I'll drop my email in the chat function so that you can ask me questions. And based on how things are changing, I should be able to offer any updates you have. Margaret, Thank if you. I may, yeah, sorry, if I may chip in. Uh, based on my recent experience with um, some of my friends that are coming to the UK for study, another option is if you have a very good relationship with your bank um, account officer, speak with your account officer. Um, if you discuss with them, they, they know how to best to help you. Because I have somebody recently is facing the for me issue because of the news, whatever, but he was able to speak with the bank um, account officer and within two weeks it was it was able to be it was sorted yes exactly um that's an option many students used last year and some persons um are unable to this is true some persons are unable to access the account officers either because their account has been quite long <laughs> yes they've opened it for quite a while so they don't even know who the account officers are and some other persons have opened their accounts in different states across the country. So maybe they were serving maybe in Kogi states and they opened that account there and they've just been using it. So it will be difficult for them to go all the way back to Kogi states to go and locate their account officers. That's another reason why I said, okay, it's also possible. You can always discuss with your bank. Mm -hmm. Find someone you can discuss yeah. with at the bank, mm -hmm. regardless of account yeah. officers or anything. Yeah. Find them and discuss all the options available to you to be able to make the payment as seamless as possible. I think you because can just be, you can just be bold about it and just walk into the bank and simple. have to speak with the with the with the manager, or manager. somebody yes. exactly. Yes, and speak with give you somebody. Order. They should be able to give just you. Just be bold about it. Just be bold about it. You are a bank customer and they are there to render you service. Just speak simple. with the yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Margaret. Um, any of our uh, attendees, do you have any questions on that for Margaret right now? I can see I am with you. You've got your, your hand raised still. Do you want to ask a question? Mm, okay. No, um, I've Hi, given me. you permission. Okay, let me see if I've answered any of these questions before. Or anybody yes. else, uh, any questions you would like to ask on the, the whole money issues? Hi, Amide, you're free to talk. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please, uh, I wanted to ask a question about my school fees because I pay my agent, so I want to confirm if he has made the payments yet or not. Okay, no problem. What I'll do, Ayomide, is I will check that for you and then I'll private message you. Did you have any other questions? No, that is all the question that I have for now. Fantastic. Thanks for joining the panel. Um, I'll just put you back down to uh, a video participant. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. So all back right. to so, the presentation. Um, apart from that, we also have um, issues with the visa applications. It's They've um, removed the priority service options. So students will now have to wait at least six weeks to submit their visa applications. I think we are having trouble with Margaret's connection. Okay. Let's uh, 
Yeah, Toby, if you want to go back, uh, have we got you back now, Margaret? <laughs> we lost you there for a minute. Yes. Try again. Try again. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to mention a quick update about these applications. They have recalled the priority service options. So you can no longer use the super priority or priority options, which means everybody's going to go through the standard visa route. And that's taking as long as six weeks now. So if you already have your CAS or you've gotten to the pre cast stage, and then um, your proof of funds is matured or is about to mature, it will be best for you to start putting your visa applications together. Please, if you know you're working with agents, work together with your agent. If you're using the direct enrollment team, start putting your documents together so that you can get your visa outcomes as early as possible to resume on campus. That's all I wanted to say. Lovely, thank you, Margaret. Any uh, questions for Margaret on any of those issues on the finances or the visas before we move on? Uh, Yusuf has raised his hand. Yusuf, you're free to talk. Hello, Yusuf. You? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so it's about this payment and then visa application. I'm having issues paying my through through with my bank card, my debit card. I'm unable to make payment. So I want to ask if we can still meet up with the May intake because of the visa application. I think they've closed the priority visa. Yes. Yes. Yourself. Yes, Yusuf. The answer to the question is yes, because uh, you are still permitted to study online up until the 30th of June. Um, at the moment, uh, like Margaret said, applications could take anywhere up to six to eight weeks. As long as you make your payment, hopefully by um, next month, I would say, um, you should still leave you enough time to get things sorted. Just be aware, though, that by not, it's not only about making payment next month, it's about ensuring that your bank statements are in order as well, because uh, yeah, if all already, those... I'm only, the only delay I'm having is the making the payments. Okay, I have all my correct. documents. Just the yeah. So just like Olale and Margaret suggested, you know, have a chat with your account officer in your bank. Uh, they should be able to sort that out for you in regards to transferring that money across. Um, understandably, you don't want to be using um, any other methods to make the payments because they can seem more expensive. Um, it's, I, I understand you want to get the bank rate and not the uh, extra rate that is, is, is floating around. So yes, just go speak to your bank. Um, you've got, Margaret's going to share her email across to you as well. Uh, she's there to provide you with any help that you need in, in, in making that payment, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, if everybody's happy, I'll just carry on with the presentation and then we can do some Q&As at the end. Great. Um, So uh, while we were talking about, you know, applications, uh, the other important thing is you need your BRP. So, when, so once you've uh, received your entry clearance for vignettes, that's what you get after your visa has been accepted. Uh, you will have entry into the country for about, um, you, you can use that for four months until you pick up your biometric residence permit. Once you arrive in the UK, it's very important that you email the UK VI reporting team. You are a University of Plymouth student, but ultimately you're starting at University of Plymouth International College. Uh, you're under the University of Plymouth's license. So with that, you need to adhere to some rules and regulations. That's making sure that your contact information is up to date, ensuring that you communicate with both the college staff members and also the university. Uh, medical center is also available. So once you're paying for your um, a visa application, one thing you're gonna be doing is an international health surcharge, um, quite a large amount, as you can imagine. I, I think it's somewhere around 350 a year for the period of study that you will be uh, taking whilst you're at uh, this higher education institution. Um, you, you have access to uh, GP and the medical services available at the university. Uh, the other thing that you will have um, access to is um, COVID vaccination. So if you are um, maybe single G jabbed, you haven't been jabbed at all, you can come over here and get all your jabs um, once you're in the UK. Um, no extra charge, it's free. 
and it's available. Enrollment. So this is very, very important. It's very, very important that you get enrolled on time and early enough. So once you've made your payment, um, for those of you uh, who are joining us, this may intake, you are permitted to study online initially. So you can complete your enrollment by booking an appointment with a member of the student support staff. So myself um, or my colleague Dion, who will take you through the enrollment process. And these are some of the documents that we would need to complete your enrollment. Um, they're the documents you use when you made your application, but we also send across an enrollment form where we take some of your personal details, uh, your mobile number, uh, your current address in the UK when you arrive, and some other information. Just make sure that your emails are working properly, and we will take you through the whole system. Um, as you can see, the um, on undergraduate enrollment is different from the postgraduate enrollment. So if you're doing a pre-master's course, you start a week later than usual. Um, Understandably, the uh, pre-master's last day of enrollment is a lot earlier because you're on a shorter program. Essentially, most of you who are doing a pre-master's that will be on this uh, on this uh, Zoom session will only be studying for four months, whereas most of you who will be doing a, an undergrad course uh, will be here for four to eight months in, in a foundation before you progress across to the university. Um, during our orientation week, aside from enrollment, what we do is have various uh, welcome talks uh, from the different faculties and the different facilities across the university. Uh, you have a meeting with the college management team, which includes uh, the, doc the head of teaching and learning, Dr. David Jones, and also the college principal, Peter McDonnell, who will tell you all about life in Plymouth from an academical, academic standpoint. Um, all the things that you need to do to be a successful student, just like Olali and Massimo have been. And um, also some program specific talks from the different faculties and different people that you're going to be interacting with once you progress across to the university. An introduction on how to join classes online, as well as where your classes are physically right across the campus. So we will hire some student ambassadors. Olale was a student ambassador during his time. He had to show people around, try and get them integrated into the way of um, education here in the UK, and also just you know take them around to the accommodation, good places to eat, good places to shop, everything that you need um, is available here. Um, these are just some important dates for some of you. Uh, you can take, uh, take it across. Um, so when the accommodation starts upon arrival, so that's completely fine. Uh, information about your orientation programs, when the classes start for each program. So if you're an undergraduate, when your classes start, um, and also for postgrad, when the semester ends, for those of you who would like to return home over the holiday period, as well as when the exams are due. The other thing I'd like to point out uh, is the uh, semester fees and when the next lot are due. So the 2022-02 semester fees, uh, what I mean by that is when you're studying during this May intake, if you're on a two semester program, your semester fees for the next intake, for so for the September intake will be due on week nine of teaching, which is the 22nd of July. So it's very important that not only are you prepared to pay the first lot of fees, which is a deposit or half of your whole academic year study, but be prepared to pay the next installment just in time so you don't incur any extra charges. Um, just to finish off really, um, just a little bit about the Students' Union. So this was the um, sabbatical offices for the last academic year, 21, 22. Um, they've just had elections and I should be updating you with some new information of who the new sabbatical officers will be for the next academic year. Uh, but as you can see, there's a nice uh, diversity there in regards to the students. Uh, Fozia Ahmed was a uh, VP Wellbeing and Diversity. In the past, we've had a fellow UPIC student become the president of the Students' Union over the years. And um, basically, it's a work experience uh, outside. So it's an extra year. Anybody can um, you know, put themselves for election for this. Um, and it's, it's paid as well. So it's good experience for students who really want to support their whole cohort and move across and make changes. Uh, some information about the societies and clubs available at the bottom of that link. Like Massimo said, it's a good place to meet uh, friends, uh, family from Massimo's point of view, because that's where he met his girlfriend. Uh, not all of us are so fortunate, you know, what can I say? <laughs> and yeah, just to end it all, uh, those are 
um, mine and Tim's contact details for those of us in college. Mal Margaret will be putting her information in the uh, chat function. So feel free to contact any one of us uh, if you have any questions. I'll just leave the screen on, but um, Tim, if we can start going through the Q&A now, everyone. So if you have any questions or anything that I haven't mentioned, you can pop them on the chat. But in the meantime, actually, before we get on a QA, and I, I think um, we've got a couple of questions for our, our, our guests. So Olale and Massimo, um, just about, you know, your own experience about what whilst you studied here in uh, the University of Plymouth International College. So Lale, obviously, we started with what your name is. We've gone over what course when you graduated. What did you do in your spare time whilst you were in Plymouth? Thank you, Toby. Um... Like I always tell people, Plymouth is an interesting place to be. And um, if I'm not studying, I'm at the Plymouth Hold because I love taking pictures. I love taking pictures. So if I'm not studying, I'm in Plymouth Hold because of the green, the, the water. So I take picture. In fact, I didn't tell to be this. One of the, some of the pictures I took when I was in Plymouth or Plymouth Hold, in my workplace, there is a photo competition that we had. And I just, put in some of those pictures. I didn't even know it's, it's going to go far. Right now in the board in my office, some of those pictures are there. <laughs> it was one of the top pictures there. So if I'm not, if I'm not um, reading, I'm at the Plymouth Hall, I'm, I'm at the Barbican, or take a trip to Cornwall, which is like an hour drive to Plymouth. Fantastic. Great. Now, Thank, thanks. Um, how about my smoke? What, how did it feel when you first arrived um, in Plymouth and at UPIC? What were your first impressions? I think it was really good. It was certainly warmer than I had expected, uh, to be honest. <laughs> but you mean it, that you got a warm greeting or the weather was warmer? The weather. And no, also <laughs> warm. <laughs> <laughs> but, warm full round. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it was good. And people are friendly. So especially I remember Toby from the first day, he was very hopeful, you know, and still here. So that's why right. I think that it's a good, it's good place to be at. I mean, we I think still... he said Tim, didn't he, Toby? I think he did say Tim. <laughs> Tim, we still have to go for a squash, don't we? <laughs> we do. So, 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 yeah, I think we, I used to do a lot of sports outside uh, the university hours. So it, if either I'm playing a racket game or five-a-side football, I'd be by a bar. And there's also a bar inside the uni, so that's good for people to know. Fantastic. Um, Massimo, which, which, is, which is your favorite place to visit, Massimo, in Plymouth? Your favorite bar or your favorite sports venue or your uh, favorite any other place? I, I'd, I'd say really it, it depends. When you, when you first start, I think it was the bar and you'd have your friends there meet up. But I think later on you end up just going on by the hole, have a barbecue there with your friends and go around with a bike and just a really good place to be around in general. Fantastic. And Massimo, can you tell us how like your degree helped you get the job that you're currently in at the moment? Yeah, well, I mean, it all started with UPIC, gave me the foundation, gave me the sort of the understanding on the how the culture and society works, which is a big thing, wow. you know, you need to be comfortable in an area to excel in that area. So with that, then came university i did my first and second year and then you start applying for a placement year which is a, a year in the industry and that allowed me to go to southampton and work in a FTSE 500 company for about a year and i learned a lot and that gave me the experience to then do my final year and do do relatively well in it and got myself a, a good position yeah right even before graduating started working just a week after my final exam so it's been good been good and as you can see i'm still here so <laughs> great well, well, like, how, how well or in what ways did you feel that studying with UPIC um prepared you for for um going on to university and doing the masters Thank you, Tim. Um, not only did the um, UPIC change everything about me, 
UP actually set the right foundation for me. Um, my time in UP, I learned a lot because coming from Nigeria, the educational system is quite different and UP was the right place to actually change that orientation, prepare me for what is ahead. And with the help of the fantastic member of staff, I, could, uh, I can beat my chest and say they are fantastic and helping. So they actually prepared me very well. I remember one of the course, I, I used to be scared about um, doing a master's project. I never did a very fantastic mm. project back home in Nigeria, but one of the modules I had is just basically about dissertation. And mm. I actually helped me when I get to the university, when I progress to my master's and everything I learned from UP actually helped me. At the end of the day, I finished with a distinction not only did I finish overall distinction, I had distinction in my project dissertation, which is something that I always scared of, but UPIC actually set the foundation right for me. So I could say my journey to the university and where I am now could have been that smooth, if not for the solid foundation I had with UPIC. And if I have the opportunity again, I'll still go back to UPIC. <laughs> PhD, great, PhD member, maybe PhD. <laughs> maybe PhD, yeah. Fantastic, thanks, thanks both. So, um, are there any more questions that anybody would like to ask? Um, Margaret, are we up to date with the Q&A? Yes, we are up to date. I've been able to attend to most of the questions. That's great, yeah, thank you, Margaret. Yeah, but there's a student who asked a question about um, classes. So they wanted to know if they would be attending classes daily or um, on a... Yeah. Yes. yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, I'll answer that one because I'm the one that keeps an eye out on everyone's attendance here at the college. Absolutely. All classes are important to be attended um, depending on your timetable. It might not be daily because you might have a day off. Um, I know on Wednesdays, uh, the university and the college itself like to free up some class, um, free up some times for students who want to participate in societies and clubs like Massimo mentioned that he's part of the volleyball team that usually happens um, on a Wednesday so the sports activities are available on a Wednesday afternoon really so it sparingly depends but in regards to your license your ability to study so your visa your visa regulations state that you must have above 85 to 90 percent uh, attendance on all your subjects so it's very important that you know you attend all classes uh, some of you who have tier four visas will be permitted to work up to 20 hours during term time and full time during um, holiday periods. So it completely depends, but absolutely you need to attend all your classes. I mean, you're paying for not just the actual experience uh, academically, but you're also paying for the social experience. So don't sell your short, yourself short by not attending as many sessions as you can. I think that was the last question on there. I think we've okay. Yeah, Margaret's back now. Was that was that was that all the questions then, Margaret? Is there anything you guys would like to add, um, Olale Massimo? Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um. The only thing I like, just like what Toby just said now, maximize your time and um, the opportunity you have in in the university, especially in UP. It actually helped a lot, and it actually it's like. Take, for example, Maximo and myself. Um, I was hoping that when I finish my university, maybe I'm going to spend some time at home looking for a job and looking for what to do. But I got my job right before I even submit my dissertation. So I have to wait and the company has to wait for me to finish everything. So you have 20 hours to work, yes, but I will say um, concentrate more on your study for now, because at the end of the day, the, the results at the end of the day matters a lot. So you can work, but don't let that be the main focus. Attend your classes, then do enjoy yourself in Plymouth. Plymouth is a beautiful place to enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself and everything will be fine. Fantastic. Thank you. I think that's, that's it for me, really. Uh, um, like you said, it's um take your time and i mean enjoy but at the same time take make the most of it with your studies 
Thank you, Great. Massimo. Thank you, Massimo. So I think our hour is pretty much up now. So unless anyone would like to ask any more questions. Yeah, I have two other questions here. One from an anonymous um, attendee. He says if the visa comes out late, what will happen about the orientation day? Uh, so the orientation day is recorded. So you'd have access to most of the sessions available. Um, you, you, it doesn't matter whether your visa is late because remember you can have, you can participate in the whole orientation week online. Uh, you just need to make sure that you're here. So you, you're physically in the UK before the 30th of June. Uh, the orientation is in, is, is in May. So that's over six weeks difference. Yeah. What was the other question, Margaret? Yeah, um, the student is asking about um, how many costs should we be expecting as pre-master's um, student? But I'm going to be sending, I'm sending you an online link now okay, to the pre-master's courses available. So you can see the models there and then you should be able to um, get the information you want for that question there. Fantastic. Set live. How much does cost, how much does living on campus cost? Um, living on campus, so we don't, so, I mean, we, I try not to, ref, uh, there's campus accommodation available, but it's for the price that you're going to pay. I always, we always recommend students to have a look around the campus. So it's not a far distance to walk, um, but it's just more value for your money um, in, in regards to the kind of accommodation available. Olale and Massimo um, have lived in Plymouth, Massimo lives in Plymouth right now. Um, I'm sure they both have had friends who've lived on campus and understandably where they've lived and where Olali and Massimo have lived, they can say that there's more value in just shopping around. Okay, uh, but in regards to an actual figure, I would say anywhere about 90 pounds and above, really. Um, how can I join in an online link? We will send you the link, uh, Sulakshana. Uh, how can we search for a job in Plymouth at the Student Hub? Uh, there's a careers department there that can help you search for a job. Also, you have the um, amazing internet, so you can just pop on Google and have a look at Jobs Plymouth, yeah. and you'll find loads of uh, different uh, jobs of part-time jobs available. Um, job for spouse, not for student. I mean, we can't. We only serve uh, the student. I'm afraid. So unfortunately, we can't provide you an answer of you know, any jobs for your spouse, unfortunately, you can just pop on Google and have a look yourself. As for the searching for job online, what I did was, like Toby says, search on Google, there's so many job portal indeed, so many job portal online. What you just need to do is just streamline it to Plymouth and you get you get an um, update about job availability in Plymouth in whatever field you, you, prof you profile yourself into. Fantastic, thank you. Well, yeah, I think we can, I think that's pretty much it now. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for Lale and Massimo for joining us. Uh, you guys have really added value here and yeah, we look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, Massimo, I look forward to your squash battle with Tim. It's going to be quite the battle. I You're just imagine. leaving it for me to get older and older, aren't you, Massimo? I, 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 so, so you have a chance. I think I, think, I, think I have a score to settle with Toby to table tennis, remember? Yeah, we can we so, can do that so, too. So when next I'm in Plymouth very soon, I think we have to do that battle. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and then I'll beat both of you. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, thank, thank you to our alumni. Thank you to Oluwale and to Massimo. It's great to have your uh, input and your uh, student perspective. Very much appreciated. Um, thank you to my colleagues. Thank you to Margaret. Thank you, Toby, for taking us through all of that information. And thank you to everybody who joined us today. We very much look forward to welcoming you as Plymouth, as Plymouth students, as UPIC students in Britain's coolest little city, Vivacy. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.